Well, this is an exciting lesson. It involves zero and negative exponents. And so let's first start off with a zero exponent. In other words, what do you do if the exponent is zero? What do you do if the exponent is zero? And here's the key. It means it's the base divided by itself. So I'm going to in the middle here, right? When you have x to the zero, I'm looking at the rule right here, right? As you have x to the zero, it means take the base and divide it by itself. So you end up with x divided by x. And anything divided by itself is 1. So x to the 0 power equals 1. Now, I like my students to learn this step because, again, it keeps then in their mind exactly why you get 1 or how you get 1. And remember, here at MathLite, we're trying to give you understanding. We're trying to help you to understand what's going on with the math so that you can apply it in all the variations. And so the rule step would be the x divided by the x, all right? And that's going to equal 1. So if you can see our first example, we've got 17 to the 0 power. Now, ultimately, the answer is going to be, and hopefully you're thinking, and I hope you're thinking 1. But again, why? Let me write the rule step. Help to train my brain. So it's 17 divided by 17. And in fact, I'm going to use my red here. That equals 1. Okay? So here's some variations. Let's go through some variations. We'll look at number 2. Now remember, a, a key to exponents is understanding what is and is not the base. Because you have a parentheses here, and that exponent's right next to the parentheses, and anything in the parentheses is the base. So if I were to write the rule step, I would write 3ab divided by 3ab, and that happens to be 1, right? 3ab divided by 3ab. How about this one? Negative 2, parentheses, x cubed to 0. A lot of students will miss this problem, but not if you apply the exponent only to its base. If you want to, pause the video, see if you can see if you can get it. All right, and if you're back, hopefully you thought this. This is a negative 2 times an x cubed divided by x cubed, right? So what do you end up with? A negative 2 times a 1. What's the final answer to this one? Negative 2. And the reason being the zero exponent only applies to its base and you end up with a negative two times a one for a total value of ne negative two. Makes sense? Hope it does. Hope it does. All right. How about this next example here? How about zero to the zero? Now this one's an oddity because here's what happens when we do the base divided by itself. All right. So we had this rule. We did these earlier in the course. Zero divided by anything is zero. But then we said anything divided by zero is either undefined or infinity. Well, what if you have a zero divided by a zero? Well, that's not infinity. That's It's not zero. This is simply undefined. Undefined. That's kind of <laughs> craziness. How much of nothing fits into nothing? All right. Well, so just undefined, and I just want you to be aware of that one, all right, that it is undefined. Can you take a moment, and can you write in your own words uh, what it means to have a base to the zero power? Go ahead and pause the video and write that. Okay, so hopefully you're back, and maybe you wrote something like this. Um, when you have a, a base to a zero power, it means to divide the base by itself, and the end result is one. Or you might have said any base divided by itself is 1, or any exponent of the 0 power results in 1 because it's the base divided by itself. Something to that effect. Okay? All right. Let's get to our next topic. This one really excites me, and that's negative exponents. And I'm going to try to teach you a progression here with these negative exponents. Okay. So i got a rule to the left, but I want you to look at this chart here to the right, this box. And I'm going to try to help you to understand what's going on with negative exponents. Okay, so follow me along here. I'm going to use my red and, and help you to see where I'm thinking. So first off, we've got an x cubed. And if I wanted to, I could write it x cubed divided by 1. Or I could expand the x cubed and make it x times x times x over 1. Okay, no big deal. We understand positive exponents. 
Well, now when we go to x squared, I can do the same thing, x times x over 1, okay? Now, I want you to try to notice a pattern. Some of you are very good at patterns. You recognize patterns very easily. Now we're down to x to the first, and I left the one exponent for emphasis, right? Because usually it's not there. So either x to the first over 1 or just x over 1. All right, do you see what's been happening? Look from this to this to this or from this to this to this and try to recognize the pattern now here's the zero exponent right we just got done di doing this one we said it's the base divided by itself do you see a pattern three two one base base hmm any idea what comes next? Again, it takes some pretty good uh, deduction skills and the ability to understand patterns. But would this make sense? Can I take the 1 and now put it on the top? And can I now take the x to the first power and put it on the bottom? Does that make sense? I hope it does. So this one is 1 over x. So what would go here? Can you see the pattern? Those of you that can, again, I have a 1 on the top. What goes on the bottom? x squared. And so on the right, or another way of saying 1 over x squared is 1 over x times x. And finally, the, the next one, and we could keep going forever here, but again, one on the top, so what would the bottom be? You catching on? And I hope you're thinking x cubed, because that's exactly what it is. And another way of saying that would be 1 over x times x times x. Notice what happened. With positive exponents, I'm going to go all the way back up to the top here at the x cubed, right? With positive exponents, the base is in the numerator. Positive exponent, base in the numerator. Positive exponent, base in the numerator. Zero exponent, base top and bottom. And then you now transfer to the bottom. Negative exponent, base in the bottom. Negative exponent, base in the bottom. Negative exponent, base in the bottom. Does that help you to understand the pattern? I hope it does. I hope it does. I think that's kind of neat. And uh, that, that one's pretty, pretty cool. Oh, I think I raced a little bit more than I wanted to there. I'll just leave that up like that. Let's go back to our rule here on the left. So x to the negative a, I'm going to take my blue, equals 1 over, and I'm going to take my green, x, and realize what has just happened. The exponent is no longer negative. It's now positive. It is no longer negative. It is now positive. And I'll tell you a little quick concept here. I wouldn't put this in your notes, but I'm just going to show it to you. If you think of it as the base over 1, if you take it and take it across the fraction bar, the sign of the exponent changes from negative to positive. And that is exactly what's going on. That is the situation. But here's what you have to understand. A negative exponent means do the base times its exponent in the denominator. A negative exponent tells you to do the base times itself in the denominator. Okay, so let's work a couple examples here. All right, so yeah, let's just get rid of this. It'll probably be easier. I won't have to fight it. Okay, so let's use this property here. Let me get the property back up so you can see it. Okay. All right, my screen likes to be a little crazy. Hopefully, it won't do it again to me. All right, so let's do our first example. So this is a 1 over what? And I'm going to use my color here, 3 squared. Make sense? And this one we can further simplify, which would equal what? 1 ninth. See, a 3 to the negative 2 is a 1 ninth. Second one, pretty simplistic. 1 over what? n to the 7th. Right, negative exponents in the numerator become positive exponents in the denominator. And that's what that negative is telling you. Do the base to its exponent in the 
denominator. Okay, so let's do a couple compound problems here. So look at uh, problem number one. So let's go back to yesterday and remember x to the a times x to the b equals x to the a plus b. Agreed? So now there's the rule step. So now where do I end up? x to the negative 1. Do I leave it there? No. Standard operating procedure, right? Uh, normal protocol is to not leave negative exponents. So go ahead and use now the negative exponent property and you finish up with 1 over x. No need to show that one exponent, right? So 1 over x, which is really 1 over x to the first power. All right, how about number 2? Now you got to go to the division property, right? x to the a divided by x to the b equals x to the a. What's the exponent of that top number? It's not shown, right? It's a 1 minus the bottom, right? So you end up with n to the 1 minus 5. Make sense? Okay. And we all know that that's n to the negative 4. 1 positive, 5 negatives, leaves you 4 negatives. Do we leave our answer like that? We do not. We have to give it a positive exponent, and we end up with 1 over n to the 4th. Hey, zero exponents and negative exponents. Learn them well, and they'll serve you well throughout your math.